Kristen Bergman. I'm the Marketing Director at Avada and will be facilitating today's event. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few reminders. During this webinar, we kindly request that everyone please remain muted throughout the presentation as this live event is being recorded. After the webinar, a full copy of the presentation will be sent to you, archived in our SlideShare and YouTube account, and all of this information will be included in your email. I would now like to introduce our presenter, Jim Hetherington and Ferguson Neal. Jim, take it away. Thanks, Christina, and, and uh, thank you to everybody for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, I'm Jim Hetherington, uh, Vice President of Sales with Avada, and I'm joined by Ferguson Neal, uh, a principal consultant who leads all of our SNOP and IBP efforts. And before we get started, I have one slide up front just to make sure that everybody's got a baseline understanding of who we are. Uh, I promise to be brief uh, so we can get right into today's content. Uh, Avada is a supply chain consultancy that supports companies using Oracle solutions for supply chain planning. And I'd ask that you remember two things about us. First, when I say supply chain planning, be it demand planning, supply planning, and SNOP, this competence has been our singular focus for 15 years. It's all we do. Uh, and, you know, if I think about it, it's been more than three decades since people began writing and speaking about SNOP. And many of the companies that I personally speak with are struggling with what I'd call even a basic foundation for it, and that's because it's hard. It, it isn't easy. And it's not just about best practices. It's how these practices can be applied to you. And on this point, our focus and experience can help you move forward. Second. We've married that domain expertise with Oracle software skills to help our clients make the best use of Oracle tools that support supply chain planning. Our clients, they depend on us to help them get more value from existing applications and provide them with industry templates and accelerators to advance in new areas of planning. And today's webinar is a great example of this. Our SNOP IBP Express it codifies our knowledge of what works, including a base process, data, and a tool to support integrated business planning. And with this, I'll turn it over to Ferguson. Well, thanks, Jim, and I appreciate, like yourself, I'd like to uh, say a thanks to everybody who uh, carved some time out of their schedule to join us today. We're going to spend the next 30 minutes going over uh, this agenda and outline it as it's outlined in front of you here. And we're going to start off with what SNOP IBP is, the Sales and Operations Planning or Integrated Business Planning is, best practices that are we see and documented in today's, um, today's marketplace. And then, of course, we'll get to the IBP Express, our solution that is both a process-driven, supported by a Oracle technology tool, and the benefits that allow you to stand up from scratch an SNOP process within 90 days. Avada also has a roadmap. We'll do in a little detail about that, and that's how we support organizations that are either starting from scratch for their SNOP or wanting to advance a current SNOP process to an IVP maturity level. And we'll talk a little bit at the end there how to do a quick assessment uh, online or uh, with a visit from a Nevada representative to kind of do a gauge of where you're at in your maturity level of your SNOP IVP process. With that said, I'd like to share with you some information we've gathered uh, just recently this year. We've uh, worked with uh, several of our clients out there and folks in the marketplace, and we've asked them some questions, and we'll share you that insight as we go throughout. And this first question is really um, kind of geared about how we look at our business. And so the question was, was stated, you see the future of your business through what lens? In other words, what is it that makes up and allows you to project how you're going to perform in the upcoming year? Uh, this isn't about a question about what are you going to do next week or next month, but really in a rolling forecast looking at anywhere from 12 to 24 months. And what we found, a majority of our clients told us that it's really based on the annual business plan. The budget itself is something very important as they gauge themselves and as they drive their business going forward. And at that point, it reminds me, uh, like many of you were on the webinar today, uh, I've spent 25 years as a, as a practitioner. Uh, came out of an engineering department and started managing my first department in the, at a much younger age. I won't date myself, but let's just say when it came for the budget time and the uh, finance team called me up, we had a stack of spreadsheets that I was going to comb through another stack of green bar paper 
calculate those spreadsheets, and then in eight weeks be done with our budget. Well, as a young engineer, I was excited about it because I knew a lot about the equipment efficiencies, performance improvements, so I was ready to get going. And at the first conversation, I asked a simple question from my finance team. So what are we going to end up selling next year? Of course, they said, hey, don't worry about that. We just need your budget numbers. I thought that was a little unusual, so I asked the, second, the question a second time. There was a longer pause, and I said, don't worry about that. We'll get that from sales. You just do your budget numbers now. So after I asked a third time and didn't get an answer, I thought that was a little unusual. There's got to be a better way of getting the information and doing this annual budget. It wasn't until a week later that I got a call from our sales team asking, what is it we're going to sell next year? Can you tell us in detail? And that's when I realized that we really were putting together a budget, like most companies at the time, that was based on assumptions. It was based at a, uh, a level where we were looking at dollars, and we had multiple numbers coming in that weren't really integrated at all. And so that's when we, we went on this career path about finding what is a better way of doing our annual planning. Before we do that, I'd like to kind of point out what SNOP is and what it isn't. If you look at this chart here, what we've done is we've outlined some of the different levels and types of planning that go inside the organization. At the bottom, we look at detailed planning, or what might be considered to be finite scheduling that goes on inside of every organization. And you're looking at anywhere from one to eight weeks out. And then you get to some short-term planning, which allows you to do more MRP and rough cut capacity planning. Traditionally, we see that anywhere between one and three months. The next level up is when you start to talk about SNOP, and you're starting to really look at a longer time horizon. You're looking at one to 24 months out there, and you're trying to synchronize your performance from a monthly standard to an annual plan. Again, you're working at an aggregated level which means that you're looking at families and subfamilies only. You're no longer looking at SKU levels at this point. And then of course, at a higher level, you're really talking about SNOP and tying that into your strategic plan. Not uncommon to see this between three and five years. And those are the type of plans, and it's important we keep those in mind because it's, we've got to understand what SNOP does and what level we want to handle that, and not only that, what role you play in the process and who owns the SNOP process. This illustration here kind of, kind of looks at it graphically what SNOP does and what you're trying to do. So with the current view of it, you're taking your, your performance on a monthly basis, you're reviewing it each month, and you're projecting out over the next rolling 24 months at a minimum what your performance is going to be compared to what you think your, uh, or, or what your annual budget might state. So you're taking in operation performance changes, significant financial impacts in there. You're documenting and reviewing the assumptions that make up those business uh, scenarios. And you, of course, financially reconcile that looking at your risk and your opportunities. But once that gap has been identified out in the future, the real question becomes, who takes the responsibility for that? And when do you take actions, even more important, when are the decisions made to address those gaps? And that's ultimately what SOP is trying to look at. If you spend time in your monthly meetings talking about a skew or performance on this current month, you're really not doing an SNOP process, you're handling a production issue. SNOP, again, is looking at a long-term planning horizon, and it's mainly being managed, it's, we're, you're doing it to get executive decisions and making the decisions that only executives can make and at a long-term plan. This chart here kind of backs that up. When we look at the industry, there's been several surveys compiled and put together. We find that most companies fall into this category. 70 to 80% of companies surveyed do not do SNOP at an executive level. That means that what they're doing is they're getting a bang for the buck by having the supply and demand integrated in review, but they don't go beyond that. In fact, 50% of the companies stated that they were in the first level of maturity change. So we can see right now that there's a lot of folks out there doing SNOP, but they haven't quite advanced it yet to the executive review or what some people might call integrated business planning. This is an excellent chart here, and it shows the characteristics of both best-in-class companies and some of those that are disadvantaged. And I want to point out just a few of them on this chart. One of the characteristics, of course, is monthly and the cycle time being done. SNOP is reviewed on a monthly process. It is not reviewed weekly. It is not reviewed quarterly. The planning horizon typically is 24 months rolling, not 3 to 4 months, not 12 months at the end, not on a calendar date. You need that long-term horizon to see some of the trends that are going on in your marketplace. 
The outcome of the SNOP process is really about identifying the gaps and coming up with strategies to close those gaps. It's not about production output or trying to close the month or even the quarter. And of course, the level of integration at SNOP connects all your business plans together and allows you then to find out and track against what your strategy plan is for long term. It's not about meeting numbers and particularly for any month or quarter. Another survey from earlier this year, we looked at this, and the question was, is how do you predict your future? In other words, how do you know your performance is going to guide you towards your strategic uh, goals? And when we look at this, we still see assumptions from the business budget process or the annual budget process was heavy-handed. But We also start to see a lot of other influences. They look at sales projections. They look at trends going on in the marketplace. So we see a lot of our clients are telling us that they're taking that information in, but they're still tying it back to what the budget number was. The disadvantage of counting on the annual budget itself as a standalone guide is that when you go through the process, many organizations are doing that in the October time frame. So by the time you get to June, July, and August again of the following year, that data can be almost a year old and it hasn't had a chance to reflect any of the trends or the new assumptions that have gone on in your business. When we talk about advancing the SNOP to an IBP platform or advancing SNOP to the integrated business level of maturity, we see the steps kind of broken down in these four quadrants here. At first, there's an improvement in communications, and that's because you're taking your demand review and you're going over and you're passing it and, and integrating your supply plan. And there's a lot to be gained by that, no doubt at all. There's a big bang for your buck spent right there. And what happens is you start to prevent problems from having or you start problem solving at that stage. Typically, you'll see the managers, the functional managers, they'll have outside advisors getting them going, and that process starts up. But a lot of companies, as we saw from the previous slide in the surveys, really stop there and they don't get to the next steps. And what happens is, is in the second or the third and the fourth quadrant, is you start to to prevent problems from happening. Or when you get to the fourth quadrant, you're really talking about strategic decision making happening at that time. And the reason is, is that that process is not only owned, but it's being run and heavily involved by the executives of the organization. And ultimately, SNOP or IBP is an executive owned process. It is managed by the different functional managers, but it's bubbling up the decisions that only the executives can make. And those are the decisions that have to be taken in order to project your future plans and lining them up and synchronizing them with your strategic plans. At that point in the third and fourth quadrant, what we find is that most of those environments, if not all of them, are, have been automated by some form or the other. And the reason that is, as you go through the SNOP cycle each month, there's a great deal of energy and time spent generating the plan itself and reviewing and reconciling the plan. If that's done in a spreadsheet, there's only so much ground you can cover in a given month. When it's automated, the real power of SNOP comes in and that allows you to start to look at scenario plans, the risks, the rewards, the options that might come up for your long-term future. So, why the gap in SNOP maturity? Why 50% of the, the companies surveyed out there saying we're not at that, that high level of maturity yet? Simply it's because we find that there's the missing elements for success. There's a complete holistic organizational understanding of what SNOP is. Most companies only have supply chain or they might have one or two of the functional departments involved and integrated. So there's not the complete integrated process design. And ultimately, there's not the tools that are helping to stand up the process, allowing you to accelerate the monthly cycle and getting to the real power of SNOP by reviewing the scenario plan and the what-if type questions. That's why we've designed, with a partnership with uh, our friends at Oracle, the IBP Express. And we've simply put this into a four-step process out there. And I want to remind everybody watching this, this is not just a based on the technology, but for us, IBP Express is a process, a business process driven solution supported with Oracle technology. It's built on OBIE, it lives inside of the APCC environment, it has customized dashboards by Avada, and it's been endorsed by Oracle. When you look at it, you start off with a demand review, and we've got dashboards for each one of these important steps of SNOP. After that, you're aligning it and reviewing it, 
and going over to supply and you're looking at your inventory strategy. Of course, an important step once you balance that out, you're going to a financial review where you're doing the reconciliation and looking at some of the scenario plan. And then finally, an executive review. An executive review of SNOP of the current and future state of your entire organization. In other words, what you're generating is one plan, one set of numbers, and one truth to drive your business forward. The advantages of using the IBP Express is that it's a business process driven solution. It's built in Oracle supply chain tools. There are also pre-configuration of SNOP or IBP reports exist already. So the dashboard itself already exists for each one of those important steps of the SNOP process. What that does is that allows us to come in, do the design workshops, and get an organization that does not have an SNOP process, we can get them up to their first cycle in 90 days. It also, the, S the IBP Express allows you to do the what-if scenarios. That's getting to the real power of any SNOP process. It should be pointed out there's no prerequisite of maturity in your planning process or any planning software that you're currently using. And it's either independent or can be quickly integrated with the Oracle planning tools. So rather, you, if you already have the mantra or ASCP in place or you don't have any of those, we can start you off with the APCC tool and get you up and running and, again, get you to your first SNOP cycle within 90 days. Here's some examples of the uh, dashboards that have been created by Avada that sit inside of APCC. And I will go into just a handful of these to show you what they look like. This is a supplier review example of the dashboard, executive dashboard. And inside of that review, what you're looking at is information from the inventory plan, the supply plan, the IVP plan, and of course the annual budget. So we're laying over multiple pieces of information, one graphical view. If you look at this example, it's very clearly to see out in the future where you can start doing your rough cut capacity planning and illustrating that the gaps that you might have between supply and demand. And again, when you're looking at them out in the future, it gives your executives an opportunity to make decisions at the appropriate time to address those gaps and to do some strategies to fill that gap out. It also, in this particular situation, it starts to project your inventory strategy. What happens here is, the, uh, is you have a gap between demand and supply, your inventory is going to fall off and may create some service level issues. So you're, again, you're allowed to see that out in the future and review that each month up to the point where you need to make the decision. This next dashboard is one of the financial reviews, and there's a lot going on in this one here. It includes both the IBP plan and annual budget. It talks about margins, and it's giving you two unique reviews at the same time both a year-over-year year and a month-over-month. Month. The year-over-year year being typically what finance wants to know, what was our performance last year, how do we compare to this year? And the month-over-month month is looking at what your IBP plan is now and what it was a month ago, so you can see the changes and the trends that are going on there. So it's a very important graph to look at from the financial when you start to reconciliate. It allows you to look at gaps in your budget. and allows you to look at predictions as you're going out and rolling 24 months to find out what's changing from month to month. And again, giving you the appropriate amount of time to make some actions against that. One more dashboard here is the scenario reviews. It's simply illustrating the annual budget and it's looking at two possible plans or two alternatives for your future. So again, this is all integrated through APCC. It allows you to do it quickly so you can do as many scenario plans that you possibly can get in when the when you get to the executive level and one of the question, what if? What if we consider this? Or what if we change that assumption? So what the SNOP process becomes, it's not a debate about the numbers anymore. It's about challenging the assumptions that go into your business plan. Last dashboard I'll show you here is a typical waterfall of the demand review. So what you've got is your current IBP plan in there, and you're looking at the last six months of your demand review and what have changed there. This can be very important for a lot of organizations because they want to look at their accuracy and what's changing from month to month as they go forward. Back to another one of our survey questions here, and this one quickly just simply asks, how do you view your business both the current and the future? And again, we see a lot of folks are relying on that annual budget number. But we also see some influences coming from other areas too. A financial review, 
combination of all. And we even have some folks who says, you know what, I'm just not sure. It's just kind of done hodgepodge, ad hoc in different ways. For those who are in the SNOP or are moving up to the maturity chart, it shouldn't be any stranger to see some of these benefits that have been well documented. But the one I want to point out with is, is that most people start looking at doing SNOP and integrating all their business plan because they're trying to drive cost out of their business. They're trying to manage their working capital better or reduce their safety stock. Some great benefits there. But what typically comes from the folks who get to the higher maturity levels, the better you are at planning, the better prepared you are to take advantage of the demands and the unforeseen demands and future demands in your marketplace. And that's why the growth, the growth revenue pops off on this page. It's not always the initial intent, intent when you start off with SNOP, but most certainly is a benefit that a lot of folks are seeing out there when they start maturing the process itself. Just want to remind you as we start to wind this down, some of the keys to success, in other words, the characteristics of the best in class SNOP IBP implementations. You know, and that's saying that the companies that are at a high level of maturity all have these qualities. First off, there's no doubt about it. SNOP or IBP is owned by the executive. It's how they make decisions looking at the future and the strategy of their business. It is not only supported, but it is well understood by the executive team. It's integration of all your plans both planning, supply, finance, and strategy. It's handled at the aggregate level, not at the SKU level. It also is a long-term planning, so minimum 24 months. Mature SNOP programs utilize scenario planning. They're using multiple views, really challenging those documented assumptions that underline their business. And of course, they keep it simple. The theory about SNOP is, is you want to be roughly right you want to measure what's important for you, publish it, and remember, you're going to replan each month as you roll forward. I want to touch quickly on how we get organizations and our clients to a 90-day strategy of operating SNOP for the first time or advancing your SNOP to an IBP level. We start off with awareness. It's very important that there's a level set in the organization, and we do that through education sessions that go on that talk about best practices and what they look like. At Avada, we also have found that it's important to identify the value elements that are going to make your organization successful. We do that up front. It's important to create that baseline. After all, you're going to put a lot of hard work into this over the next 90 days, so once success is starting to drive to the balance sheet, it's important that you can stand up and take credit for that. So we'll track those elements and we'll do the benchmarking and baselining up front with you. And we'll even have a workshop so the executives are lined up with those important KPIs. Then we do the BPR, the business process redesign. And what we're doing in these workshops is we're making sure that the business process around each one of those steps fits and is unique to the uniqueness of your business. We can figure that and tailor that, making sure we're documenting the inputs and the outputs that are very critical to your business environment. Then a configuration is done. That's done inside of the APCC tool. And then once you go live, we're also there supporting your team and coaching them on as they go on. That's an important strategy because not only do you get the first cycle in 90 days, but your maturity level will advance over the next year. So we come back routinely and visit and look at what you're doing in each one of your review meetings and at your executive review. I'll finish up here by talking about this. I know we've got a great tool in place and a great partner with Oracle, but we've heard this in the field, and it's once you've automated SNOP, you can just simply turn your back and leave the autopilot to run. There couldn't be nothing more than, from the truth than this one right here, and that is successful SNOP and IBP processes have a combination of people, process, and tools. A key attribute to that is, is the review itself. It's the discussion. It's the challenge of the assumptions that underline your business planning. And it's done monthly. And that's what's necessary. You can't remove the managers and you can't remove the executive's participation in a true SNOP process. Nothing further than that. But you do need the tool if you want to automate it and advance the process so you can spend more time doing the what-if scenarios. Jim, at this time, I'm going to pass it back over to you, and I appreciate everybody's patience as we ran through that, that illustration of 
IVP Express. Now, thank you, Ferguson. We uh, appreciate it. And, and look, we are excited about this solution, and I think what we're excited about is this is our opportunity. We've been in, you know, we've been supporting people for more than 15 years, hundreds of efforts in planning, and this is our opportunity to provide a solution that gives people a foundation for SNOP because people have struggled with this. It's process-based, but it's supported by the data you need to get you started. We find that, you know, even the best SNOP processes without the data automated in a way that can help them push forward, it doesn't stick. So I think if we look at next steps and, and things you may be able to do, um, we will be sending out uh, a note to people who have registered and attended this event with an on, a link to an online SNOP IBP health check. We encourage you to take advantage of that. Uh, it's, it's well thought out. I think it'll provide you with um, a certain level of customized view of where do we stand vis-a-vis -vis our peers and where, where we could be um, with taking some of the simple steps that we've defined today. Uh, I would also encourage you to reach out to us, whether it's an on-site or you know remote assessment that's more personal to your environment, certainly willing to do it. And, and we also provide benchmarking services that are very specific to say along the metric that define uh, a mature SNOP process to our business and in our industry, vis-a-vis -vis our peers, where do we stand? Um, I would encourage everyone on the call, uh, visit our website to learn more about us at www.avada.com. Um, we do provide a great deal of thought leadership, be it webinar, uh, white paper based, if you follow us on LinkedIn, we can provide that to you. Uh, I, I would also say that if people are interested, they could reach out to us or me personally directly for more on what we've discussed today uh, and, and for us to, to connect and learn a little bit more about how we might be able to help you. And with that, I'll uh, turn it back over to Christina. Great, thank you. And on behalf of Avada, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and also to Jim and Ferguson for presenting. It's a great job. Uh, remember, the full presentation will be emailed to you, as Jim said again, and also uploaded to our SlideShare and YouTube account. If you have any questions regarding this presentation or really anything else that we may assist you with, please feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. And again, thank you for joining us today, and enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are.